Okay, so let's have a look at the Junior Cert Higher Level Maths paper for 2022 and we're going to have a look at questions 8 and 9. So the diagram below shows two vertical buildings A and B, which is the diagram is not to scale. Mary stands at the top of building A, which is here. She is 220 meters above the ground, so that's here. And let's see, she wants to work out the distance uh, oh yeah, the distance is marked Y and Z, so this distance here and this distance up along here. Uh, that is the distance from the top of the building A to the bottom of the building B and the height of building B respectively. Mary measures the two angles that are marked 35 and 20 degrees in the diagram to the bottom of the building B and to the top of building B respectively. The broken line is horizontal. So we've got to work out Y and Z at some stage. But let's just work out um, the size of the angle C first. So we've just got to work out this angle here. Very simple question. So let's do that. So we have this triangle here. We have two of the angles. So we just got to find the third angle. So the size of angle C then is going to be just equal to 180 degrees minus 90 degrees minus 35 degrees. And that's equal to... 55 degrees. Okay, so C is equal to 55. So let's just put that in there. So we have C here is equal to 55 degrees. Okay, by the way, we also know that this is 154 meters here. Now, let's just look at part B. So Mary works out that the horizontal distance between the two buildings is 154 meters, correct to the nearest meter. Use Pythagoras' theorem to work out the distance mark y on the diagram, give your answer correct to the nearest meter. So we gotta work out what y is here. So we have this right angle triangle, all we gotta do is square 220, square 154, and add them together and then square root them, that'll give us y. So let's do that. So we have 220, which we need to square, we need to add 154 we need to square and that will give us y squared. So y squared then is equal to 72166. When you add those two together, square root the two of them, left hand side and right hand side, and you get 268.5. And we want this to the nearest meter, so y is then going to be equal to 269 meters that's our actually that's our actual answer there 269 meters okay part c then use trigonometry to work out the value of z the height of the building b give your answer correct to the nearest meter okay so if we look at our diagram again here we've got to work out z so we really just need to work out this distance from here to here because we already have the distance from here to, he to here. That distance is the same as over here. It's got, that's going to be 220, 220 meters from here to here. So I'm just going to look at this triangle. Now I've just got to work out the opposite here, the opposite to 20, so I'm going to use tan, tan 20. So tan of 20 is equal to, let's call this, I don't know, p. So tan 20 is equal to p over 154. So let's do that. So tan of 20 degrees is equal to P over 154. So that just gives me the distance P then is going to be equal to 154 times the tan of 20 degrees. So that gives me the distance P. We need this to the nearest meter. So let's, um, let's just do a couple of decimal places here because we're not quite finished yet. So P is 56.05 and so on, it goes on forever. So that means then that the distance Z, I think they call it, uh, yeah, Z is just going to be equal to 220 plus 56.05. That gives you 567, 276.05 and so on. So our answer then, Z then to the nearest meter is 276 meters. Okay, so that's that question done. Let's move on to question nine. 
So 9, here we have uh, part A, K is 7, M minus K is 4, okay. So uh, work out the value of 9, K minus 6, M. So usually they just give you the value of K and the value of M. So here you've got to work out what M is. So in this particular case, we've got M minus K. So M minus K, K is 7 is equal to 4. That'll give us M is equal to 11. Okay, we've got to work out 9k minus 6m. So usually what you do is you write it down, just leave brackets here for where the letters were, and then stick in the numbers. So k is 7, so we've got to multiply by 7. m is 11, so we're going to put 11 in there. That will give me 7963, 61166. So that is 63 minus 66, that's minus 3. Okay, so that's part A. Let's have a look at part B. Factorize fully. Okay, so this is a group of four. You have four types of factorizing to be able to do. So this is a group of four type factorizing. So if we take 8ax minus 14bx plus 4ay minus 7by, we've got to work out in pairs here what we can factorize it. So we're going to take this pair and we're going to take this pair here. So let's take the first one. Um, we can take out 2 anyway from the numbers. Uh, we can take out not an A, but we can take out an X. So that's as much as we can take out. So what do we need to multiply this 2X by to give us this 8AX? Well, we need to multiply by 4 anyway and also an A. We've got to multiply by minus. We've got to multiply the 2 by a 7. We've got to multiply an X by a B. Okay, so let's do this part here then. What do we? Um, what's the highest common factor of these two here? Well, 4 and 7, we can't do anything with that. A, there's no A here. Y, there is a Y. So let's take out Y and see what we get. We'll get 4A here anyway, and then we'll get minus 7B. Okay, that, that's perfect because we have the same thing in both brackets. So really you just factorize again now, take out the highest common factor, which is this and this. So we're going to write down 4A minus 7B in one bracket, and in the other bracket we're going to write down what's remaining, which is the 2x plus y. And that's it for part B. Let's have a look at part C. So in part C, we've just got to simplify, write the following as a single fraction in the simplest, simplest form. Okay, so we have 2 over 2x plus 1 minus 3 over 3x plus 5. As you multiply these two, 2x plus 1, and 3x plus 5. We've got to multiply those two together. So you've got to say to yourself, what do I do to that 2x plus 1 to give me this denominator down here? Well, we just multiply it by 3x plus 5. So you must multiply the top by 3x plus 5. So it's 2 times 3x plus 5. There's a minus here, so we need to write that down. Then you've got to say to yourself, what did we do to that 3x plus 5 to give us this here? Well, we multiplied by 2x plus 1, so you must multiply the top by 2x plus 1. So the top is a 3, and we've got to multiply it by 2x plus 1. Now 2, 3 is 6, plus 2, 5 is 10, minus 2, 3 is 6x, minus 3, 1 is 3. And I'm not going to multiply these out, 2x plus 1, 3x plus 5, and that'll give me 6, sorry, this is actually, this here should be 6x, so there should be an x in here, 2 times 3x is 6x, so look, I've got a plus 6x, I have a minus 6x, so that they give me 0, and I've got a 10 minus 3, is, which is 7, and then on the bottom I've got 2x plus 1, and 3x times 3x plus 5, and that's really it. You could multiply out the brackets in, on the bottom if you want, but really this is this is our answer here. Okay, so let's have a look at D then. Solve this equation here. Give your answer correct to two decimal places. So this is a quadratic trinomial, so you should spot once they say give your answer correct to two decimal places or third form or something like that. You know that you can't just do the two brackets. You've got to use your minus B formula, your quadratic formula. So we have a here is equal to 2, we've got b is equal to minus 7, and we've got c is equal to minus 3. Our formula, by the way, is in your tables. It's minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. If you have a formula to use, always write it down first, then substitute in the numbers. So we have minus b, so b is minus 7, so it's minus minus 7 
which is plus 7, plus or minus. I've got a b squared here, so we've got to put in a minus 7 here and square it. We've got 4 and we've got two numbers to put in there. And on the bottom, we've got one number to put in there. So the a is 2 and the c is minus 3. And down at the bottom here, we have an a, which is 2. So we have 7 plus or minus the square root of something over 4. So minus 7 squared, minus minus is plus, 7 7 is 49. Minus times plus times minus, well minus times plus is minus, and minus times minus is plus. So this becomes plus, 2 4s are 8, and 3 8 is 24. Now let's just finish this off. So we have plus or minus, uh, 49, 59, 69, 73 here. Okay, so that means our x then is going to be equal to 7 plus the square root of 73 all over 4, or 7 minus the square root of 73 over 4. Now we've got to work the, both of those out correct to two decimal places. Okay, so I'm just at the end here anyway, so that's good. So x is going to be equal to, when you work those out to two decimal places, you get 3.89 and you've also got minus 0 0.39 and that's to two decimal places and that's it for these two questions